Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of All Angles. I'm Dion Jacksmill. I'm sure you've heard a lot of talk about migration over the past few weeks, whether it's teachers migrating or other Jamaicans. Are you patriotic? If you migrate, can you be seen as patriotic? Why do people migrate? We're going to be looking at a number of those issues in today's edition of the program. And in studio with me, I have Dr. Natalie Dietrich Jones. She's a research fellow at Salesis at the University of the West Indies Mona campus. We're also going to be hearing from throughout the program, Jamaicans in various parts of the world, Lij Tafari Smith, who is a Jamaican in Japan. We're going to be hearing from the Reverend Dr. Maxine Osborne Foster, as well as Dr. D. Terence Foster. They're in the United States, and Dr. Kadia Hilton Fraser, who is an educator right here in Jamaica. Before we get into any of that, though, let's take a little bit of a look at what's been going on. Montego Bay Deputy Mayor Richard Vernon upset a whole lot of Jamaicans when he suggested it's unpatriotic to migrate. The Deputy Mayor said, quote, only cowards run away to go to America because they're seeking out opportunity. Opportunities are there overseas, but do not run away and leave your country. Shortly after that, the website, theglobaleconomy.com, ranked Jamaica second out of 177 countries for human flight and brain drain. The Statistical Institute of Jamaica, Statin, reports that over 11,000 Jamaicans migrated in 2019. Imagine the National Stadium completely full. That would be about a third of the people there. The Prime Minister has been appealing to Jamaicans to stay and build the country. PNP General Secretary Dr. Dayton Campbell had this to say. I want to tell the Deputy Mayor Dr. Montego Bay that if my dog come Prime Minister, I'm going to call me coward and I'm going to up here and leave that too. Then you tell me, you expect people out here, doctors and nurses and police to be working less that was a man working on a garbage truck in the state and when he get up and go where to make life better for his family, you have the nerve to call him coward. You're out of order. But when should Jamaicans put country above self or self above country? And can you be a patriot while living abroad? I want to... Okay, the great Pluto Shervington, and don't bother message me, I know Pluto migrated <laughs> after doing that song, the ultimate irony. So um, thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Dietrich Jones, all our um, guests on Zoom. I'm going to start off with Liz, Liz Safari Smith, who is now in Japan, a Jamaican in Japan. Thank you so much for joining us. I think it's early in the morning where you are, correct? Thank you for having me, Dion, and good evening, everyone. Yes, it's actually 10.40 a.m. in Japan, so I'm at work right now, okay. but i got some time to speak to you. Okay, well, that's awesome. All right, well, let me, what for you was the, the trigger point? What was the point at which you said, boy, I'm half a step, I'm half a lift? You know what's funny, Dion? Um, in all my 28 years of living, about the first 25, I had never had any intention to leave Jamaica. Um, case in point, I didn't even apply for a visa for to be a tourist at any point because Jamaica was just fine for me. What? Um, but yeah, I, I I didn't because I'm like this is where I'm going to live. I have not seen anything abroad. You know, you always hear about the USA and you always hear about the first world countries and how they're nice. But you're like, what could really compare to Jamaica? But then after a while, you kind of realize that you know life is more than just loving a place and a culture but you realize that you have to eat there comes a time when you have to sleep and you have to make sure that you sleep 
comfortably, you have to realize that there is a point where it's not just about you, but you're going to have a family to take care of, even your parents. And so for me, I realized that struggling from jobs to jobs, even after getting my first degree in journalism, yeah, it was a matter of fight or flight because, not, and no pun intended, as I say, flight. But <laughs> I realized that when it came on to the bills being only covered, you know, by this much, every single month after you've heard for such a long time that education is the key to success you know you realize that now -uh. at this point i have to do something because i'm only getting older so what were you seeing as your trajectory if you stayed in jamaica for me i think i'd actually stay into a job because you know people say that jobs are not there i'm not going to be that extreme to say that it is so because i do know that jobs are in jamaica but Think of it this way. You go to the quote-unquote best schools that people expect you to go to. You know, you matriculate, you do whatever you're supposed to do at university. Just to take a job that's not in the line of your study or a job that you never expected to go. I don't think that is what life is for me. I wanted it to be fulfilling. And so for me, I think I'd probably be doing something that I'd absolutely hate waking up to do every day. And I just said to myself, if I have to do that, then what's the point of living? And so for me, I knew that I'd have to go and seek uh, a job somewhere that would at least serve me while I serve it, because I think that is what true purpose is. So in this very moment, I believe that I'd probably be doing <laughs> something in maybe the office or data entry that would be so monotonous and it wouldn't challenge me in any way. And that's not what I went to school for most of my life for. So how did it feel now, having spent all your life, as you said, saying, yeah, man, I'm going to stay in Jamaica, I want to stay in Jamaica. What did it feel like coming to the realization that, boy, I think to, to make a comfortable life, I'm actually going to have to leave? You know, it's actually bittersweet because even when I got accepted to work in Japan, I thought, wow, this is a new life. I'll be able to be exposed to new perspectives. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm literally giving up something that I've known all my life. And it's easier said than done because I know a lot of people, especially on social media, they love to say, you know, they want to move away and travel. But you never really consider the fact that I'm used to my mother here. I'm used to the KFC being there. I'm used to my church here. And so you have to leave everything behind. And so I was happy until the point where I touched Norman Manley Airport. I promise you, Dion, I, I almost turned back because I said I couldn't do this. But being here for three years, <laughs> um, I kind of realized that I made the right decision. And I'm nearly out of time, but tell me why you say you feel you've made the right decision. Because I think the things that I've been able to do, I don't think I'd be able to do that while being in Jamaica. As like it relates to tapping into all my potentials, I'm now doing music. I just finished my master's. You know, all of these things being able to do in two, three years, and it's not necessarily attainable for everybody, especially coming out of school looking for a job. So for me, I just feel like I've been able to do all that I wanted to do and more do you in feel, that regard. Do you feel less patriotic having left? Absolutely not. I actually feel more patriotic because when I'm in Jamaica, I feel like because everybody's Jamaican, it's quite normal. But here I am actually an ambassador. I'm a representative. And so I stand out more as a Jamaican and I feel it's my, my duty to make sure that people know Jamaica even more. Quickly, just to say, I have about three events next month to promote a Jamaica-Japan relationship. And I think that if I was in Jamaica, it's not something that I'd think about. So I actually feel like I am purposeful here. You think you might come home? Yeah, I will eventually. Um, but for now, I'm still in the building process and building myself so that I can be better for my country, but not in the near future. So when you hear, boy, people migrate are cowards or y'all need to stay and build the country, you think what? I'd be shivering because I'm afraid. I mean, <laughs> um, I, 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 I hear his point and I get it. But, you know, those who know it, feel it. Maybe the deputy mayor, if that's his title, is in a way better position. So hats off to him. But for those who are not in it, I'd say you have to do what is best for you. You love your country, but you love yourself as well. And so you have to find a middle ground in which both you and your country can benefit, which is exactly what I'm doing right now. All right. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Just before we go to the break, so, so Dr. Dietrich Jones, how typical are those sentiments we're hearing from Lidge? Well, I would say fairly typical among 
um, different strata of society because um, you have, I mentioned on, on radio, the poorest of the poor, but you also have skilled nationals who want to make a contribution and for various reasons aren't able to realize the potential that they think they have within themselves. And that's one of the motivating factors to leave. But that's not the only reason why people migrate. There's family reunification. People leave because they feel their freedoms are constrained. So they might go away to a place where they feel they can really live and be themselves. And there is also the very big elephant in the room, which is crime and safety and security. So um, people move for different reasons. Um, social and economic mobility is only one um, or two of the factors that um, drive people to go. All right. I'm going to have to leave it there. Liz, great talking to you. Thank you so very much. All the very best. Stay tuned. We'll be back with more migration stories after the break.